So if you've been paying attention the last few months then you'll have noticed that LEGO have released some 18 plus diorama sets for the Jurassic Park and Star Wars theme. We have the T-Rex breakout set, the Trash Compactor, the Trench Run and Yoda's Hut. So these are sets that are meant for display on your bedside cabinet or desk at work and I think they're great. They really do capture that iconic scene in the movies we love and it brings a whole new audience to the LEGO product. However, I think LEGO need to make these for other key franchises such as Harry Potter and Marvel, not just Jurassic Park and Star Wars. Harry Potter and Marvel, along with Star Wars, are the biggest movie franchises in the world and some of LEGO's best selling licensed LEGO themes, so I do think there's justification for LEGO to pursue these movie diorama sets for these themes. Now, since I'm a LEGO Harry Potter YouTuber, I thought I'd take on the challenge myself. So what I'm going to do is make one Lego Harry Potter diorama set from each Harry Potter movie, all eight of them. This will of course become an eight part miniseries I guess, and this will be the first part which I cover the Philosopher's Stone, or the Sorcerer's Stone if you're in America. So what diorama have I made for the Philosopher's Stone I hear you ask? Well actually, I toyed about with a few ideas. I was going to first do the winged keys room from the end of the film. I pictured this diorama as having a solid wall on one side with keys attached to it via transparent poles, then one wall vertical to this with a door leading on. Then the centerpiece of this diorama would be Harry trying to catch a key in the air on his broomstick right in the middle. However, I ended up doing something different. Taking inspiration from how bad the devil snare is in the Fluffy's Encounter set we got in 2021, I decided to try and recapture that scene in the movies in this 18 plus diorama style of Lego. And here is what I came up with. So as you can see, the scene captured focuses on the room below the devil's snare with the iconic quote from Ron, lucky we didn't panic, displayed there on a 2x4 tile. I am really happy with the outcome of this set proposal. I think the walls look great with the ivy running down them and then the devil's snare itself is held up by its own weight, which I feel is a solid architectural achievement in the world of LEGO itself. I think the variety of colours in this set really make it pop and will be an ideal addition to a Harry Potter fan's mantelpiece in the living room for example. This will be a set that appeals to the sort of Harry Potter fans who normally would not buy Lego sets, but this they might. And considering this set only contains around 400ish pieces, it would probably retail for no more than $50, making it a perfect present or gift option to your Harry Potter mad friends and family. For the minifigures in this set, I have just plucked them from the wizard's chest set that we got last summer, but ideally LEGO would add some dirt patches and torn clothes to these figures to make them unique to this set, and of course it would sort of make sense for the clothes to be battered just after fighting Devil's Snare. So today I'm going to be showing you the second LEGO Harry Potter diorama mock I have made, this time based on the Chamber of Secrets film. So for the Chamber of Secrets I had a ton of suggestions from the last video and I thank you guys all so very much for them. I ended up toying with a lot of ideas. The first was going to be Harry lying on the floor of the Chamber of Secrets with the basilisk poising over him with forks attacking his eyes trying to make the basilisk blind. However. I had a lot of trouble with this. <laughs> Just the snake build itself was awfully tough to build at that scale. I thought also about building the door to the Chamber of Secrets, but we've already had that built before in a Lego set last year, so I ended up settling on something else, that being the Slivering Common Room. In particular, the scene where Harry and Ron disguise as Crab and Goyle in an attempt to get Draco to confess to them that indeed he was the heir of Slytherin. I thought that this would be rather challenging trying to fit in the table, some chairs and packing in an atmosphere which was undoubtedly Slytherin, which also resembled what you'd expect a common room to look like, meaning we'd have bookshelves and obviously things like a fireplace, and I think I achieved that. But before I show you the finished model, let me show you the furniture I put together. 
Okay, so the first thing that I'll show you is the loose chairs I made. I tried to make these as small as possible as obviously the diameter of this movie diorama mock couldn't exceed an area of 12 by 12. So I ended up shortening a sofa into basically a nice leather armchair, which you can see on the left. On the right we have a same size chair and I went for a more traditional wooden chair with hints of dark green and also pearl gold accents and I'm really satisfied with how this ended up looking. The table is rather simple and I basically just ran out of space, though I managed to fit a quill bottle and a book on the table so I guess it's big enough. I made this table using a black telescope piece for the leg and just some round plates so a very simple build indeed. The next bit of furniture is studded into the set and that's this bookcase cabinet. I've added a drawer at the bottom with a row of books in the middle which are actually just tiles which just lie in there, they're not studded in or anything like that. At the top row I have a miniature trophy minifigure piece in glittery trans green which I thought was an attractive colour and just an empty glass bottle with a red top to go along next to it. On the other wall I implemented a built in fireplace and this fireplace primarily makes use of similar components in which the wall itself is made up of. So quite a simplistic build but one which matches well with its surroundings. I also added a couple of snake statues on either side of the fireplace which protrudes out of the wall. So before I show you the final finished model, I'll show you the floor design that I came up with. So the floor design was naturally the first thing I worked on when making this mock and I actually spent 3 hours experimenting with different tiled patterns. I wanted the floor to be dark which I felt was in essence of Slytherin house as portrayed in the movies. I also wanted hints of Slytherin itself so naturally the colour green springs to mind and also a hint of... Luxury, as Slytherin House, as portrayed in the movies at least, gives a sense of superiority and notoriety, and I wanted that reflected in the way the Slytherin common room diorama mock was made. So the floor design I went with is this nice pattern which fills the 12 by 12 floor area perfectly. It also utilises the colours black to help keep that dark theme going, also the dark green of Slytherin House and also the pearl gold which is the colour that springs to my mind when I think of things like superiority. So all that was left for me to do was to build up a common room on this floor design and fit in all of this furniture and this is what I came up with. As you can see everything fits in all nice and cosy. We have the table and chairs in the middle of the room and I utilise the same wall positioning as the devil's snare mock in which I have integrated the bookcase and the fireplace. The walls have a lot of greebling on them as of course this room is located in the dungeons beneath the castle so naturally the walls probably wouldn't be the smoothest. I also added some robust wooden pillars to help keep the roof up if you will. Due to this being an underground location and if you look at rooms with a lot of weight above them such as a car park they have these great big pillars everywhere so that's why I have introduced some into this mock. The quote I have added on the printed tile at the front of this, which is a tradition with these 18 plus Lego movie diorama sets, is You're acting very... odd. Said by Draco Malfoy, of course, which occurred when Ron, or Crab actually, gets up to punch Malfoy, which would have been a bit of a giveaway. <laughs> And that brings me on to the minifigures of this set, who are Draco Malfoy, taken from the Hogwarts Flying Lesson set, and Crab and Goyle, taken from the Hogwarts Polyjuice Mistake set. The good thing about these two minifigures is that they have reverse prints of Harry... So today, I'm going to be showing you the third LEGO Harry Potter diorama mock I've made in my eight-part mini-series, where I create a LEGO movie scene diorama based on each of the eight Harry Potter movies. So for the Prisoner of Azkaban, I wanted to do something different from what I did in the last two concepts, which were essentially minifigure scale cutouts from their own respective iconic movie scenes. 
I wanted to be a bit bolder, I decided I was going to settle on trying to make a depth of field mock, where I would have a large building in micro scale on the base, let's say like the borough for example, then I would build a large minifigure scale Ford Anglia flying above the borough with the help of transparent poles. So in effect, you are looking at the borough or whatever building I choose from above in the sky from a great distance. I first started to make the scene towards the end of the film where Sirius Black escapes Hogwarts on a hippogriff. I built the microscale Hogwarts castle and grounds on the diorama base with a transparent pole coming up from the middle and I was just about to start a brick built book beak with a serious black minifigure on top riding it when I got convinced to build a different scene entirely from the prison of Azkaban. So I started all over again but don't worry that microscale Hogwarts grounds I made comes in use for the Order of the Phoenix film, so the Order of the Phoenix diorama is already complete now which shows me work ahead. But going back to the Prison of Azkaban, the scene I got convinced to change it to had a similar concept, but instead of the Sirius Black escape scene from Dark Tower, the scene I ended up building this mock on was the Quidditch scene where Harry gets prevented from catching the snitch thanks to out of bounds Dementors coming onto the pitch. I had so much fun making this and now I just want to show you, so without further ado let's just see the finished product. So here it is, look how cool it looks! <laughs> Thank you to my friend Tommy C Bricks who works on more detail on my original box art design, he has really brought this set to life. I think all the box arts from now on are going to be black themed rather than the usual blue as from The Prisoner of Azkaban onwards, the films get really dark, so I think the colour change fits with the tone of the movies. So as you can see, the Quidditch pitch takes up the entire space allocated, and there's just enough room on either side to add a row of trees. The Quidditch pitch is a nice size, and we get a couple of viewing towers from each of the four houses. In the centre of the Quidditch pitch protrudes three trans-clear poles, which supports two Dementors chasing Harry Potter, who's busy trying to catch the snitch. If you look carefully you will notice that Harry Potter here has medium legs rather than his ordinary short legs as this is of course based on the third film which is the point where the Lego minifigures move up to the medium legs from the short legs and it's only at the fifth film The Order of the Phoenix when we finally see the usual tall legs we are so used to. The quote on the tile, which has been changed to a 2x6 for this mock rather than the previously used 2x4, says to quote, Arresto momentum. Spoken by Albus Dumbledore in order to slow down his fall before he hits the ground. Overall, this mock I really enjoyed making. So today I'm going to show you the fourth LEGO Harry Potter diorama mock I have made in my eight part mini series where I create a LEGO movie scene diorama based on each of the eight Harry Potter movies. So for the Goblet of Fire I really wanted to continue making a case for these Harry Potter diorama sets being a thing that LEGO could do by coming up with something imaginative and unique. I had all the usual ideas you'd expect me to have for this film such as the graveyard jewel, a section of the maze, the second task at the Great Lake and even Mad-Eye Moody's office, but none of these ideas really excited me and I wanted to try something challenging, so I ended up settling on trying to recreate this scene. More, more. Now the challenges of making this scene were of course immense, as I essentially had to figure out how to make a Lego human skull with a snake being depicted protruding out of its mouth. Not only that, but I had to find a way to make it stay in mid-air. For the skull itself, there was a plethora of tried and failed attempts, but I eventually came up with this design. I took inspiration from designs I found on Google and ended up with a skull which was the perfect size for this model. As you can see, the colour is what LEGO would call medium green. It essentially has the glow in the dark vibe and look without actually being glow in the dark, as I thought making all of this glow in the dark was a bit unrealistic for LEGO. Now obviously I needed to add a snake coming out of the skull's mouth as seen in the Harry Potter movies and this task was a lot simpler. I went to my storage box and pulled out the instructions for the 2018 Lego Harry Potter Great Hall set and essentially went ahead and rebuilt the basilisk snake from that set but in this medium and sand green colour. 
So I was happy with how the skull and the snake looked, so I had to then figure out how to support these mini builds in mid-air. I started with the snake in which I used a clear and transparent support structure to connect it to the 14x14 base which I am using for all of these diorama mocks. The supporting pillar I made was essentially a pole with transclear L4 bar pieces in the centre to give this pole easily enough strength to support the snake build in the air. I then went ahead and used the same technique in regards to holding up the skull, but instead of it being connected to the 14x14 base, it's got its own side stand as the skull is on a forward angle. Speaking of the 14x14 base, let's take a look at that now as well as the minifigure perched on it. The ground effect is very plain as it is in the movies, it's simply just dead grass but to add some contrast in colour and to make the model more appealing as a whole, I dotted some colourful flowers here and there with hints of a stony path, as I think just having a patch of dead grass would have been pretty dull. I did consider making some destroyed and burnt out tent structures on this base, but honestly, it just didn't look good at all, so I left those out. For the Barty Crouch Jr. minifigure, I went ahead and fitted him in black suit attire. I couldn't get an exact torso print which represented exactly what he wore in the film in the LEGO Studio design software and this was the best match I could find, however I believe the face print is just absolutely perfect for David Tennant as Barty Crouch Jr. It gives off that grubby sort of look which he had and I don't think I would even swap this out for the official Barty Crouch Jr. face print that we see on the back of the Mad Eye Moody minifigures. The hairpiece I chose is long, messy and dark brown which is exactly the look he had during this scene in Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. So let's take a look at the box art for this set. It looks good doesn't it? I'm absolutely thrilled how this mock has turned out and would love LEGO to release something like this to the public as I believe it would be a real hit. For the box art design I have changed it again for this movie. The previous box art design was in the more traditional 18 plus black box art but I think what I've done here looks even better. I have added the greeny blue glow of the dark mark and also added a layer of burnt down dark ground and forestry. On top of that I added a few Death Eaters who were present at the Quidditch World Cup in their notorious black pointed hoods and I think all in all this has turned out to be a pretty epic little diorama set concept. So today I'm going to be showing you the fifth Lego Harry Potter diorama mock I have made in my eight part mini series where I create a Lego movie scene diorama based on each of the eight Harry Potter movies. Now for the Order of the Phoenix I originally wanted to make something from the Ministry of Magic such as a falling shelf from the Hall of Prophecies or the veil in the Death Chamber but considering I am already running my own separate Ministry of Magic mock series I thought it best not to incorporate any Ministry of Magic scenes into this diorama mock series. I then had a suggestion from my friend Tommy C Bricks to do something similar to what I did for the Prisoner of Azkaban segment of this mock series which was to utilise broomsticks to create a depth and perception styled diorama. In the Prisoner of Azkaban episode this came in the form of Harry at the Quidditch match against Hufflepuff trying to catch the snitch while Dementors swarmed around him. And in the Order of the Phoenix, the concept was going to be for Fred and George Weasley flying away from Hogwarts to their freedom as they throw their Weasley's wildfire whiz-bang fireworks behind them, making a spectacle for the crowd down in the courtyard. So obviously this meant to be having to essentially recreate a mini Hogwarts castle and grounds for the base of this diorama as well as attempt to make some brick built fireworks so the challenges for making this mock were quite tough but I think I managed to execute it well. But before we see the final outcome of this mock, I just want to say thanks for watching this video. If you enjoy it, hit the thumbs up to show you like it, as that really does help me keep doing what I do. And to make sure you don't miss any of my content and my coverage of the LEGO Harry Potter theme, hit that subscribe button. So here is the final outcome of this Order of the Phoenix based diorama mock. As you can see I have recreated a small section of Hogwarts Castle in a mini sort of micro scale and then I have used the rest of the 12 by 12 space to recreate parts of the Hogwarts grounds such as the Great Lake, the Forbidden Forest, Hagrid's Hut, the Boathouse and even three greenhouses. The only thing I couldn't really fit at this size and scale was the Quidditch pitch. <laughs> 
For the fireworks, I used coloured translucent snowflake pieces with inverted cones attached to each end to make it look like a firework explosion. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to recreate the Weasley W in this style, so I included it as a reference on the 2x4 black quotes tile, which I think ends up being a really nice touch anyway. As you know, if you watched my Prisoner of Azkaban Diorama Mark episode, I changed the box art from this usual deep blue design to black, as the films from the Prisoner of Azkaban onwards became more dark, and I wanted the box art to represent that shift in tone. However, for this scene in The Order of the Phoenix, considering it takes place in broad daylight, with the sun shining, I didn't feel it was appropriate to have the black box art in this situation, so I have reverted back to the previously used deep blue design for this set. So today, I'm going to be showing you the sixth Lego High Potter diorama mock I have made in my eight-part miniseries, where I create a Lego movie scene diorama based on each of the eight Harry Potter movies. Now my original plan for this Harkwood Prince diorama mock was to recreate the scene towards the end of the film where Harry and Dumbledore explore the island in the middle of the Dark Lake in Lord Voldemort's cave. This would have represented a crystal structure with a stone basin in the middle. However, I have already made this mock on this YouTube channel and while yes, that was a while ago, I wanted to create something new and a little more challenging. So I decided that instead of building at minifigure scale, I would build at micro scale again, like I did for the Prisoner of Azkaban and Order of the Phoenix mocks. But instead of using minifigures to enhance the set, I would only use the trophy piece micro figures like you see featured in the big 2018 Hogwarts Castle set. And the scene I intended to reproduce was the iconic Astronomy Tower scene, where Dumbledore gets murdered by Severus Snape. This of course meant me having to build a section of the astronomy tower which due to its size did have to be done in micro scale. Unfortunately, due to the fact that the astronomy tower was not included in the 2018 LEGO Harry Potter Hogwarts Castle set, there's not really much LEGO micro scale astronomy tower reference material to go off. So the reference material I ended up opting for was snippets from the Harry Potter movies which depicted the astronomy tower. I wanted this build to be the most significant yet from all the LEGO Harry Potter diorama sets I have done, and I also wanted it to be desirable enough for people to want to build because yes folks, I plan to release instructions for this mock on my website which will be launched later this month. I have received consistent feedback that you guys want to build the mocks I make for yourself at home, and I haven't really done instructions before until now, where now all the mocks I make in future videos will have instructions made for them for you guys to build yourself if you so desire. I will be uploading a launch video once my instructions website gets up and running. That will probably be within the next two weeks. So to make this mock desirable for you guys, I made the diorama very much different to the others I have done in this series. This diorama mock really works well as a standalone display piece, and that's even without minifigures. I didn't include minifigures as I wanted this mock to be easily buildable and affordable to you guys at home, so I thought very long and hard regarding what parts and pieces I should and should not use, and because of this more conservative approach to using pricey LEGO elements, I still managed to include two floors of interior while still managing to keep the entire model below $40 to $50 to build, which was my limit. So this is the box art for the final rendition. I think it looks absolutely wonderful. I have integrated Snape and Dumbledore from this scene onto the box art to further imprint on people what this set is all about. I have called the set the Lightning Struck Tower, which is the name of the chapter in the book. And as you can see by the 2x6 printed tile at the front, the quote inscripted upon it is of course Avada Kedavra, which is the name of the killing curse uttered by Severus Snape at the top of the Hogwarts Astronomy Tower. So let's take a closer look at that itself. So as you can see, I have built the top section of the Astronomy Tower, as I couldn't build the entire thing, the Astronomy Tower is the highest peak of Hogwarts Castle and would literally have to be about 10 times taller to be representative of its true height, but this model gives the impression enough anyway. 
I have placed two trophy piece micro figures on the exterior of this build to recreate the scene in the movie. I have put Severus Snape, who is a black silhouette, at the top of the tower, and I have placed Dumbledore, who is a white silhouette, falling down to the ground. The exterior detail I am very happy with and the only really expensive parts used were some of the roof pieces. At the back you will see the upper section of the interior exposed showing a lobby with statues on the wall and some tables in the centre. There is also an outdoor balcony up front allowing light to shine into the room from two different angles ensuring that everything here is quite visible. You can also remove this entire top section as it's just attached with a few studs to reveal an enclosed interior which is of course the staircase which the Battle of the Astronomy Tower is mainly located at. In the books the members of the Order are fighting control of the staircase with the Death Eaters and I wanted to incorporate that nod to the books in this diorama. And obviously to have a working spiral staircase which was connected to the outer walls as shown in the movies the lower interior section had to be enclosed. So today I'm going to be showing you the seventh Lego Harry Potter diorama mock I have made in my eight part mini series where I create a Lego movie scene diorama based on each of the eight Harry Potter movies. Now originally for the Deathly Hallows part one diorama I was going to recreate the scene towards the end of the film in Malfoy Manor where Dobby the house elf rescues Harry Potter and his friends. The elements I wanted integrated were some of the tiled floor for the base with one wall built up with maybe a fireplace and a portrait on it supporting the ceiling in which a vast chandelier would be hanging with Dobby placed there unscrewing it from the roof. I would also have Bellatrix Lestrange and Hermione below it and maybe some other minifigures such as Harry, Ron, Luna, Griphook, Ollivander, Lucius, Narcissa, Draco or even some of the Snatchers like Fenrir Greyback. However the issue is, these minifigures are quite expensive. Even if you only include the necessary and essential minifigures in this scene, they are still quite pricey. Bellatrix Lestrange for example costs £12 or $15 alone on sites like Bricklink and eBay and I don't want people to have to fork out that sort of money for individual minifigures just to build one of these diorama mocks in this series. Also the whole look of Malfoy Manor is very, well, black and that's it. The diorama would end up being just one colour essentially and it ended up not looking all that appealing as a display model that someone would want on their desk or bedside cabinet. So I decided that instead of building this Malfoy Manor scene I would start again and instead zone in on one particular scene at the start of this Deathly Hollows movie and that's the Seven Potter scene where Voldemort and his Death Eaters intercept the convoy taking Harry Potter to the safety of the borough specifically the scene where Voldemort himself tries and fails to kill Harry Potter with the killing curse. Obviously this scene takes place in mid-air as they are flying. Voldemort under his own weight as he doesn't need a broomstick to fly while Harry was flying with Hagrid on Sirius's old motorbike. Because of these factors I intended to utilise a building technique that I have previously used in previous diorama mocks in this series. And that's the perspective building technique where the objects in the background of the scene that are far away would be built at micro scale while the actual action would be built at minifigure scale. I used this technique for the Prisoner of Azkaban and Order of the Phoenix diorama mocks and I now intend to utilise it here. So the actual scenery and surroundings for this scene are a pretty typical English countryside with your usual roads, fields, farms and also electric pylons which Voldemort ends up destroying in rage when he fails to kill Harry. So this is the backdrop I knocked up and it includes all of the elements I mentioned before including the pylons for which I have used dark tan wand pieces on clips which I think works well. The next thing to construct was Hagrid's flying motorcycle and of course the side pod which attached onto it. For this connection I used a Technic arm which holds the pod in place and is a very sturdy connection. The design itself is quite bare bones but that's how the side pod section is in universe. So I've talked to you through the process of how I made the final model and two subsections of the build. Now it's time for me to show you the final finished model in its entirety. 
How good does this look? I'm so glad I decided to build this scene instead of Malfoy Manor. This to me would be a fantastic display piece to have on your desk or wherever you want. It captures such an iconic scene where Voldemort tries to kill Harry with the two spells intercepting each other's in mid-air. To make this model work as a set you would need the minifigures of Harry, Hagrid and Voldemort which are fairly easy to obtain, it costs less than $10 on Bricklink to obtain all of these minifigures. So if you get your hands on these figures then do be inclined to go to my website in the description down below and download the instructions for this mock. On the box art design I have made for this set, you can see the quote of Arna Kedavra uttered by Voldemort imprinted on the 2x6 tile on the front like I have done for all the previous diorama models I have made in this mock series. So for the Deathly Hollows Part 2, I obviously had multiple ideas of what to actually do for this diorama, and the first one I thought of was the Battle of Hogwarts, but considering I've just done two Battle of Hogwarts themed battle packs, um, I'll leave a link to those in the description down below, I thought I'd change it up a bit and instead not actually base this mock on the Battle of Hogwarts again, because that would be three Battle of Hogwarts mocks in quick succession, so I decided to make it a little bit different and base it on Gringotts. Okay, so taking a look at the minifigures for this mock, the first minifigure I'll show you is a original Lego Harry Potter minifigure, and that is Harry, based on his half blood Prince outfit. I think this appeared in a half blood Prince set, or might, might have even been a CMF, I can't quite remember where this minifigure cropped up, but he does wear this grey sort of jacket and red undershirt combination at uh, Gringotts. So the torso is perfect and so are the jeans. Uh, he's got the worried face there because obviously he is very anxious about what he is uh, going to do, breaking into a vault of Gringotts. And yeah, I think this minifigure works perfectly. He also has his invisibility cloak if he chooses to put it on. Okay, so taking a look at the second minifigure, which is a straight up reuse, and that is a grip hook. Now, I know this minifigure was released as a CMF. There is another grip hook which came out in the advent calendar, but this one came out in the CMF. I think it was CMF Series 2, and he does come with the sort of Gryffindor as well, which is, of course, essential to this scene because it plays a big part. And yeah, just a perfect minifigure. Okay, so now going into the two custom minifigures, we have Hermione. Now, she is obviously half Bellatrix of Strange and half regular Hermione. The head print uses the Hermione head print from the... I think it's the most recent Sirius's Rescue set where she's on the back of Bookbeak and she's just, you know, absolutely worried. Uh, uses that head uh, piece and obviously the original Hermione hair. And uh, you might be saying, why isn't it Bellatrix of Strange's hair? Well, that's because um, by this point... Uh, the trio and obviously Grip Hook as well has gone under the waterfall, the magical waterfall, which removes their disguises. So they only have the clothes um, that's left from the Polish's potion, basically. Okay, so Ron is definitely the most most custom minifigure, if that if that makes sense, because it uses three different minifigures combined. So it uses the legs and torso of McNair which came in the 2019, 2020, I think it was 2019, Hagrid's Hut set. Um, the arms, uh, usually on a McNair minifigure, they're just uh, like flesh-coloured arms, but I've removed those and put normal black arms on from you know any other like a Harry Potter minifigure. And then the um, head and hair piece is obviously Ron's um, from, I think his Burrow set from 2020, I can't quite remember but it is definitely a Ron head and hair piece. And I think this really does suit the look of Dragomir Despard, who is, of course, the person he's meant to be trying to um, uh, replicate. Uh, so, yeah, there are the minifigures for this set. Okay, so showing you the mock now, this uses the same 14x14 14 14, uh, diorama base as the rest of the mocks do in this mock series. On one side we have the entrance to Bellatrix's vault and on the other we have the interior to Bellatrix's vault. So I'm just going to show you the exterior first of all, the entrance. Uh, we have a door design using these nice one by one tiles leading up to the plaque at the top. Now obviously at this plaque we're meant to have the vault number here but I don't have access to stickers or 
printed Lego pieces um, where I can just print a number on there unfortunately so it's just it's just plain but it looks good anyway uh, we then have a door, a vault door now unfortunately this door is stuck so it can't actually move um, but it's just a prop um, which you know it's okay this is meant to be a movie snapshot a movie scene and something you display on your desk or bedside cabinet or wherever you choose it's not obviously a playset and it's meant to be capturing the scene where grip hook leaves the vault with the sword of gryffindor and locks the other three inside or leaves them inside drowning under all the gold um so if we just remove the minifigure here um we see we have a sand green floor using some hints of olive green and tan as well I'll just so you can see a bit better there we have a lantern which can also be attached to the wall if you wanted to uh, it would also be attached to this little round jumper plate but yeah the uh, the entrance is pretty simple we have a bit of an arch going on and some dark tan masonry bricks um, and also we have a sort of edge here um, where you can see some of the um, just some of the floor the black tiling and um, because that's where the the rail car is uh, meant to go basically um because obviously you have the rail car you have the entrance to the vault and you have the vault at the back um but the 14 by 14 limit uh, makes it so we can't integrate everything into the mock so i had to basically take out the rail car unfortunately well, it was never in there in the first place but i basically had to not integrate it at all um but yeah so taking a look at the inside of the vault, we obviously have all these minifigures posed, but we'll just take them out just to show you some more detail of what's actually inside the vault. So we obviously have naturally a lot of gold here, a lot of gems, rubies, crystals, cups, um, and then we have Hufflepuff's, um, or Helga Hufflepuff's cup, uh, which is obviously the Horcrux here at the back. Um, the flooring is mostly tiled with some off studs because obviously this is a cave floor so it's not going to be completely flat and you can see there all the gold which just builds up against the wall so it's quite a simple mock but it's a very pretty one it looks good with all the custom figures um, all posed which are obviously very cheap to make as well and um, the total price of this mock with all the pieces is roughly twenty dollars I think I spent 16 pounds great great british pounds on mine which equivalents to about 20 dollars 50 cents or something like that it's 217 pieces so roughly what you'd pay for a set like this from lego so and that's using you know ordering parts on bricklink and stuff like that now if you want access to the parts list and the instructions you can go on my website at topic bricks and purchase them for just two pounds and you can build this mock um you know get the parts and display it however you want um but yeah it's up to you um that is the final part of my diorama mock series and it's actually one of my favorite mocks that i've done in this entire series now obviously if you want to watch all the other episodes um i'll leave a link below to a playlist where you can actually watch all those videos if you choose to do so so look out for that and yeah so that's going to be it for this video and I hope you've enjoyed it. Don't forget to like this video if you have and don't forget to subscribe to see some more LEGO Harry Potter content. I've been Topic Bricks, I'll catch you tomorrow for another LEGO Harry Potter video. I'll see you there.